Hi, welcome to lecture eight on basic inorganic chemistry. My name is Dr. Teresa Chimambon. For today, we will cover valence shells and bonding. We will cover modern atomic theory and specifically Bohr model of an atom. So let's look at the modern atomic theory. Chemistry is based on the modern atomic theory and this modern atomic theory states that all matter is composed of atoms. So any matter at all is made up of atoms. This is what modern atomic theory is all about. And these atoms themselves are made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So all atoms are composed of protons, neutrons, and electrons. And each element has its own atomic number, as we have explained in the previous lecture, which is equal to the number of protons in its nucleus. So we have explained previously that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. And we also explained earlier on that the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom must be equal to the number of electrons. So let's now look at valence shells and bonding. We will now look at Bohr model of an atom. So Bohr proposed that electrons revolve in shells. This is what we call shell. So this green circle is a shell. This red one is also a shell. Each of these circles here is known as a shell. So Bohr proposed that electrons revolve in shells and that each shell has a fixed energy level. Bohr also proposed that when an electron moves from one shell to another, for instance, if it moves from this shell to this or from this shell to another shell, that it will either emit or absorb energy. Also, Bohr propose that the shells are identified by an integer n. So Bohr proposed that the first shell is n equal to 1. So this is the first shell. So that's the nucleus. And then the first one is this yellow circle. So Bohr proposed that the first shell is n equal to 1. And that first shell is called k shell. The second shell is n equal to 2, and that second shell is called l shell. The third shell is n equal to 3, and it is called m shell. And the fourth shell is n equal to 4, and it is called n shell. So it starts k l m n. So this is what a scientist called Bohr proposed. So he proposed that electrons revolve around the nucleus and that the shells are identified by an integer. The first shell is n equal to 1 called k, second shell n equal to 2 called l, third shell n equal to 3 called m, and first shell n equals to 4 called n. We now look at how many electrons exist in each shell of an atom. Right, so n equal to one shell can hold a maximum of two electrons. n equal to two shell can hold a maximum of eight electrons. And n equal to three can also hold a maximum of eight electrons. So for instance, hydrogen. Hydrogen has atomic number one, so it has only one shell. 
and so it belongs to n equal to 1. Sodium has atomic number 11, so there are three shells, so it will have n equal to 1, 2, and 3. Right. Octet rule. The octet rule is all about the preference of atoms to have eight electrons in their outermost shells. So the preference of atoms to have eight electrons in their outermost shells. This is what the octet rule is all about. Atoms are most stable if they have a field atomous electrons or empty atomous electrons. And to have a field or empty atomous electrons, atoms can either gain or lose electrons or they can share electrons, which we call covalent bonding. So, Apart from elements with low atomic number like hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, boron, those ones, they have low atomic number and so they will prefer to lose their outermost electrons. But those that have higher atomic number starting from carbon will always prefer to have eight electrons in their outermost shells. Let's look at electrons layout for different elements. This is the electrons layout for carbon. Carbon has atomic number six, so it has two electrons in the first shell and four electrons in the second shell. Carbon is in the second period, that's why it has two shells. And because carbon has atomic number six, it will have six protons and it will also have six electrons because the number of protons is always equal to number of electrons. Right. Can carbon form cation or anion? Remember that carbon has atomic number six, so it has two electrons in the first shell and four electrons in the second shell. Carbon requires very high energy to give out these four outermost electrons to form C4+. Remember, Whenever an atom gives out electrons, it becomes positively charged. So, carbon cannot form cation because it requires very high energy to give out four electrons. Also, carbon cannot accept four electrons to become C4 minus. Remember, Whenever an atom gains electrons, it will become negatively charged. So carbon cannot accept for electrons to become C4 minus, which is an anion, as if it accepts for electrons, it means that it will have six protons and 10 electrons. But remember that we said earlier, that number of protons must always be equal to the number of electrons. So again, C4 minus is not possible, as this would lead to repulsion, as there will be 10 electrons when there are only six protons. So in order to overcome this repulsion, it will require energy. So based on this reason, Carbon cannot form C4 minus. So carbon cannot form cation. As you can see here, it cannot form C4 plus because it will require a very high energy to give out for electrons. And it cannot also form an anion, which is C4 minus, because it will require energy to subdue the repulsion. Instead, 
of all the above possibilities, carbon can share its atoms for electrons with other atoms to form covalent compounds, as this is the easier part for carbon to follow, for it to become stable. Let's look at an example showing carbon forming covalent bonding. Carbon can form covalent bonds with four hydrogen atoms to form methane. So carbon can form covalent bonds with four hydrogen atoms to form CH4. So this is atomous shell for carbon with four electrons. The red ones, one, two, three, four. And each hydrogen has one electron because it has atomic number one. So the black ones are for hydrogen. So what carbon does instead is to share its atomous electron with four hydrogen atoms. So you can see here, this electron is from hydrogen and this is from carbon. So it shares here, hydrogen will have the two electrons that it requires. And here it will do the same thing with another hydrogen atom. It will do the same here and here. And in that way, Carbon will have eight electrons in its atomous shell, and each hydrogen atom will also have two electrons that it requires in its first shell. So then a covalent bond is formed between carbon and hydrogen to form CH4, which is called methane. Let's look at electron layout of silicon with atomic number 14. Silicon has three shells because it is in the third period in the periodic table. So this is the first shell, the yellow one. The second is the red one. And the third shell is this one. So since it has atomic number 14, it means that it has 14 protons and 14 electrons. Remember, number of protons is equal to number of electrons. So in the first shell, it has two electrons. In the second shell, the red one, it has eight electrons, if you count them. And in the third shell, it has four electrons. Just like carbon, silicon cannot form cation and it cannot form anion. This is because silicon is a metalloid. So it has properties of both metals and non-metals. The electronegativity of silicon is 1.9, which is higher than the electronegativity of metals. Therefore, it does not totally form a cation, as metals do by losing electrons. Also, because silicon does not have very high electronegative value, like non-metals or halogens that have electronegativity greater than three, it cannot also form anion with electropositive metals. So instead, silicon has the propensity to form only covalent bonds because this is the easier part for it to follow, to become more stable. Remember, atoms will always follow the easier path for it to become more stable. So let's have a look on this table, the electronegativity values of selected elements. You can see these are for metals, lithium 1.0, 1.5, sodium 1, uh, aluminum 1.5, so that of silicon is 1.9, is higher than the electronegativity values of all these metals. So that's why it cannot form cation. And it can also not form anion because its electronegativity value 
is lower than those of non-metals and halogens. So silicon cannot form cation, it cannot form anion. Instead, it prefers to form covalent bonds. What is the goal of every element? The goal of every element is to complete the number of electrons in its outermost shell. We have said earlier that the first shell needs to have two electrons, the second shell eight, the third shell eight. So the goal of every element is to complete the number of electrons that it needs in its outermost shell. For carbon that has four electrons in its outermost shell, it needs to gain four electrons or lose four electrons for it to become more stable. But since the energy to do either of these is high, carbon prefers to form covalent bond. So this is where I'm going to end today's video. Please like this video and subscribe. And I'm going to see you in the next lecture.